Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're sculpting an owl. This will be from a beginner's perspective but I won't go through any of the interface. So make sure you've checked out the playlists in the description for the complete beginner's guide to Blender. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. If you like sculpting then check out my sculpting playlist and it has more follow along type tutorials like this. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character with simple rigging and animation. It also follows the sculpting workflow so it follows that sort of artistic approach. Okay so this is what we're hoping to end up with, something along these lines. So I'll come up to the top, File, New, Sculpting. So this sets up a new sculpting file, I'll drag out my brushes so you can see which ones I'm using and the shortcut keys are down the bottom corner here. The great thing about setting up a new scene like this is that you're straight into the sculpting workspace and you've got this nice heavily subdivided sphere here. If I go into wireframe mode you can see all the polys. So I'll go back to solid. Now immediately I want to set it to die and topo, that means it will create geometry when I'm painting or moving my mesh around. So I'll press the tick button there and on the drop down menu I'm going to change it to constant detail which is much easier to understand for beginners. Keeps a constant detail for my brush and I'll change the resolution to 20. So it's relatively high, very similar to the cube as it is at the moment. And when I paint on here you can see that it builds up geometry and doesn't stretch. If not much of this is making sense then do check out my beginners playlist and the sculpting videos previous to this one in the series. Okay to make our owl shape I'll come to the snake hook tool down here and I'll make my brush nice and big so F to resize. I'm going to try and create a bit of an egg shape so I'll come to the top here. I'll just come around slightly. There we go and pull up the top so we've got a bit of an egg shape like that. And I'm just coming around to the side. It's tricky to see when you haven't got much of a mesh there, but I am actually moving around my mesh at the moment and just bring it out. So it's a bit of an egg shape, but more a sort of oval capsule shape. So something like this, if I move around, you can sort of see what's going on. So basically making a sort of egg shape or capsule shape to start off our owl. Okay, the next bit to do is the eyes. I'll keep on the snake hook tool and I'll bring my brush size down by pressing F round to the side slightly and just push the shape in like this. So grab and push it in. Just come around to the side here a little bit so we can see that shape happening. See it getting pushed in like this. Push it together in the middle like this. So we're creating that nice big eye socket there. And that's about right. Okay, a bit down at the front here so it's got a sort of interesting looking frown type thing there. And that's great, that's the main shape we want. We can now up the resolution, so I'll put it on something like 50, and start adding in a few details. Before doing the eyeballs it's a good idea to make it fairly flat down here. Make sure it's relatively flat and maybe bring this out just a touch here. That way we've got a nice round area for an eye. So at that point I can go to my draw brush, F to resize, somewhere around there and just start painting in some eyes. Nice and simple and draw and smooth out if you need to and there we go. Nice big eyes there. Then let's have a beak, F to resize the brush and let's paint a beak in. A little bit pointy down there, smooth out areas you're not sure about and hold down shift for smooth. Notice how the topology changes there, that's because one is more detailed than the other. I can always do a detailed flood fill, dine topo, detailed flood fill, and that will give it all this 50, because that at the moment had 20 and that had 50. So we've done the detailed flood fill, I'll just double check that that actually worked. And you can check that by holding down shift to smooth it out, and you can see it's much more detailed now. So we can do a quick smooth, nice big brush, and just hold down shift and smooth those areas now that need it. And there we go, that's fine. And now I want to sharpen these areas up and give him a sort of interesting almost eyebrow type things out here. So first of all we'll do that, we'll get the snake hook tool, resize the brush and pull this bit out a bit, maybe a bit bigger on the brush. They look a bit like ears at the moment and I don't want that. So coming down and around here and something around there, I'll smooth that out a fair bit though. There we go. And around here as well. Make sure it's got enough bulk at the top here. Okay that looks fine. Now we'll go to the crease brush and that will sharpen things up. 
So first of all, when I use the crease brush normally, I'll bring my brush right down for this, and I'll do it around the eyes. So just create a crease in around the eyes and just gently paint around there. It creases them up nicely and creates a divide, which is what we want. If I hold down control and paint, it creates a sort of sharp line and we can really sharpen these lines up with the smooth brush around the outsides as well. Control and drag, and we can get a nice flowing line going through our shape. Down the bottom here as well. Now these sort of curves are much easier when you've got a display tablet rather than the graphics tablet because you're looking right onto your canvas. I always find those a bit tricky on a graphics tablet where you're looking up at the screen. It takes a lot of hand-eye coordination. Okay, already it's looking kind of fun. I'm using the XP Pen Innovator 16, which is quite a good priced display tablet at about £450. Links in the description. Now if you're going to make any drastic changes to your shape, I suggest you do it now before we start getting into too much detail. So maybe get the snake hook tool or the grab tool. Snake hook tool adds topology, but grab tool won't. It will just stretch the topology that you've got. So I'll use the grab tool for now. Press F and we can just change the shape if we want to. Maybe give him a more narrow beak there. Anything with the eyes in case we distort those at all. Make sure they're nice and round. And you may want to reshape your eyes slightly so they're a bit flatter. But it's a stylized shape anyway, so don't have to worry too much about these things. And he's looking good fun. I think it's a bit wide at the front here, so we can bring this back. And he looks kind of fun, doesn't he? Okay, back to the crease brush. F to resize the brush, and let's crease up around the beak. So in here, and that's working. I feel like this needs to follow up through here, though. Maybe a bit like this and a bit smoothed out there. That's quite fun. Let's do the wings. So just something nice and simple, just to, with the crease brush, just dig in like this, round to there, and round to there. Nice, simple wings. Smooth out one side, so the outside of the wings, and then maybe just use the draw brush, nice and big, and just lightly brush on the inside to push those out a bit so they're coming out just like that. And then I'll smooth that out, smooth outside here as well. And we've got some wings. Looks pretty happy, doesn't he? Back to the crease brush. And just sharpen that line up by going over it a few times if you need to. You can obviously put the strength of this brush up at the top here, but actually I prefer just going over it a few times because if you put the strength right up and you've got a wobbly line, it does this sort of thing. <laughs> um, but, I think it was at point two, wasn't it, is the default. If you sort of go over it, it brings the topology together and it's a little bit easier to control. And you can kind of adjust your line slightly as well when painting. There we go. A little bit distorted at the top, so I'll just smooth that out. And that's all fine. And just tidy up the eyes with the crease. You can turn the resolution up if your computer can handle it. It doesn't make too much difference because when we shade smooth later on, it all smooths it out. But some people like a really crisp model, so maybe up to 100 or something like that. And then you can come in. And you might want to do a detailed flood fill on that. Again, this is kind of optional. And you can see my computer working away to try and put a detailed flood fill of 100 resolution there. You can also see the try count down here. So it's over a million tries now. So just be careful if you're going to try and make it super smooth. Like I say, it's not essential. But when I do the crease now and hold down control, you can get a much sharper line, as you can see there. So if that's your thing, then you can do that. I'm actually going to undo those steps. I just wanted to show you that, so for those that have the computing power, but I also want to show you that there were about 400,000 tries and we're still managing to get a relatively nice looking owl out of it. Maybe a sharper edge down here with the crease tool as well. Okay, bit of further detail on the eyes, so I'll go to the draw tool and I'll come in onto the eyes. I wouldn't go right in the center, I'll bring them in slightly. Oh, and I meant to hold control there, so control and dig into your shape like this. And you can see he's got a cool looking look. You can add even more detail, by a tiny little highlight there, which can look kind of fun. I might try that one more time, a little bit bigger. There we go. Just that little detail there. I'm not so sure about this bit here. So I'm just going to get the grab tool, resize my brush, come in a touch, and I feel like that just needs to be a bit smarter there. Yeah, it looks much better. Just lining these up from the side, using the grab brush, 
and then smooth out across the top and just smooth that around and we're pretty much there for our owl. Now you can do drastic changes to the shape with the elastic deform tool. This is quite a fun one. So it's very similar to the grab tool but seems to just sort of affect everything in a much bigger way and much slower way. So if I make my brush nice and big, let's say I wanted him quite short and fat, I can grab from the top here and it does happen quite slowly but you can see him sort of being squished down like that. I'll undo that because I'm not sure that's what I want but I might make him a bit wider at the bottom. So it really stretches out the whole shape. It's kind of fun, that one. I think it's a bit more funny like this. And maybe in at the size just a tiny bit, about there. So the elastic deform tool, quite a fun one, that. Okay, so we're almost there. I feel like we just need a bit more at the bottom here to make him a bit more round this time, I think to about there, yep, I think that's going to be about right. Okay, to make the feet, I'm going to go to layout mode. Now, you'll notice layout mode isn't here, so you have to press the plus icon there, and general, then layout. Once we're in layout mode, we can shift right click on this area here, that will bring my 3D cursor to this point, and then shift A to add, and then I can add mesh, icosphere I think is the best. In the icosphere, push the subdivisions up, four should work nicely and then we'll scale it down to somewhere around there. Now with this selected, when I go back to sculpt mode, that object is now in sculpt mode. So I'll go to the snake hook tool and I'll turn Dyn Topo on. So tick there, don't worry about the warning message, that's just about texturing, which isn't important at the moment. I'll change the resolution though, I don't want it on 100, I'll just have this on 30 and bring my brush right down. Alt middle click to center that object and zoom in. Now let's grab the front and just pull it outwards. That didn't work at all, let's try that again. Grab the front and pull it outwards, there we go, that's better. I'm just creating a sort of cylinder shape. You may ask why I wasn't using a cylinder, well it's just better topology this way. Trust me. <laughs> so bring that out to the front. Don't angle it or anything yet, we're just bringing it straight out to the front and then we'll copy this three times. Just zoom out to make sure you've got the right sort of shape for one claw, I'm thinking. So a little bit wider around about there, brush much smaller, over to the draw brush and draw a claw at the front. Nice and simple like that. Might be lacking a bit of detail, so we'll up the resolution to 50. Control to dig in, create more of a claw. I'll do a detailed flood fill. It won't cost us much in terms of resolution. And nice big brush and smooth out. Snake hook tool just to tidy a few things up. So I'll bring the claw down just a touch and actually the crease tool just to create that claw. Okay, so a simple claw there, just the one. Although I will crease in here as well. And from the side it's not looking right, so snake hook tool, F3 size, and let's just bring that back just a touch and that forwards. Just smooth that up a little bit. Perfect. Okay, now back to layout mode. Now we've got our object, we just need to duplicate it a couple of times. So Shift D to duplicate, and you can see I've got a duplicate there, R then Z to rotate it round, and G then X to move it on the X axis. You can see it's the X axis, it's the red one going across here, and you can see the Cartesian coordinates up the top here. I'll move that back slightly, so G then Y, move it back in the Y axis, which is the green, Shift D, R, Z to rotate it the other way, and the Z axis is the one going up and down, so that's how I'm rotating it. G then X to move it across over to there. Okay, so we've got those three which look good. I'll just rotate them all. So select them all with Shift, R then Z to rotate in the Z axis. I'll do that a little bit more, R then Z, a little bit further there, and that's good. Now it's worth joining them all together, but I'm not going to bother remeshing them. I don't see much need to. So Control J will join them all as one object. Then I can use the modifier down here, this spanner or wrench if you're American, add modifier, mirror modifier, now that has created a mirror, but we need to use the mirror object, not the center point, which is that orange dot there. So with my picker or pipette, choose the quad sphere as it is, which is our owl, and then it's mirrored across the other side, so it's using the owl as the mirror. Now we can line it up a bit more, so G to grab, maybe in the Y, and R then Z to push that out, and we've got the feet. And I'll deselect that and see how it's looking. I feel the main shape, if I select that and go back to sculpting, 
it just needs to be pushed down a touch. So I've got my snake hook tool. I'll just check my dying topo resolution. Now I'm going to use my pipette and click on my owl and then back to dying topo and you can see it's 56 so that's fine. It's the right resolution and the same as my model. If I had chosen something like 10 it would write over what we've got so far which could be a pain and change my mesh. Just going to bring this down so it's the same level. Now from the side it looks a little bit odd. I suppose that's the side just there. So it just needs a bit more of a tail I suppose. That's too big that brush so bring it in and back just a touch. And I might use my elastic to form but make my brush fairly small and bring the back in a touch. Just so it looks right from the back there as well. Okay that's quite fun. And there we have our owl. Let's go back to layout mode. I'll select both, go to front view. Oh, he's actually back to front, that's front view. So control one on my numpad will give us front view, or back view in this case. Uh, G then Z and move him above the floor just there. And now when I press shift A, mesh plane, creates a mesh at the 3D cursor, but I can press alt G to remove any movements. It's right in the middle and scale it up. And now he's got a floor. So a tiny bit of tidying up needed. You can see the owl has a bit of a gap around here. So I'll just go into sculpting once again with the floor this time to help me out. I'll go back to the snake hook tool though. I think it's a touch easier on smaller shapes and just use the guide that the floor is creating. That's a bit better. And there we have a nice friendly fun owl. Okay, so I'll go back to my original and I'm in shading mode now. And I'm going to show you my nodes. So here's the render. It's in cycles. So you'll have to change your render properties across the cycles. And we can get this nice looking clay material here, which I quite like for the renders at the moment. And you've seen me do this before, but if I press control spacebar again and control spacebar on this screen, you can see the node setup. Hopefully you can see it all fitting in there. The main thing is the pointiness node for the shading and that only works in cycles, hence why I'm using cycles. And then we've got all these Musgrave and Voronoi textures for the bump and they're all sort of slotting into each other for the bump. If you're unsure about these things then look at my video series called Node School. You can find that in my playlist section on this channel. Okay so that about wraps things up. Hope you're enjoying this. Again if you've got any ideas for objects then let me know. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.